Alright, hey guys, uh, I know it's been a while and I haven't been uploading consistently but I want to make it up to you guys and be more consistent and it also takes a while to work on new projects like a lot of my projects I usually just scrap them and I don't get enough motivation to actually continue doing them and some of these projects actually take uh, months to do or even days just to learn how the fundamentals of it working and and honestly most of the time I just like to you know just mess around with things and mods even though if they don't come up to my expectation I just like mess around with it and and yeah I really do uh, scrap like 90% of my projects that I'm doing but hey so this is one project that I think I should share with you guys uh, my friend just convinced me to upload it to YouTube so that uh, I, I guess it's somewhat interesting at least how I did it was interesting I see all right so first and foremost uh, so this is a plugin so this is a plugin uh, made by Spigot so Spigot is a open source Java project that allows us to create a Minecraft server just like the one I made right now this is a super fat world Minecraft server and what I can do with it is I can make my own plugins and add them to it so in my previous video where I did the blocks pathfinding video so in that video uh, a lot of you were really commenting that this might is just a data pack and I can tell you that I have zero idea what is a data pack and it was actually coded in Java so this plugin allows me to code in Java and I create a jar file which is a, the plugin that I use in this server right here so I code it in Java and then I take that code put it in the plugins folder and I run the server and now the plugin works in this server which is provided by Spigot so this is a Spigot server so that's how it works and if you want to know more about this code that I just did um, in my previous uh, project which was the pathfinding uh, blocks pathfinding project uh, one of you guys asked to see the code and honestly the code is seriously garbage that <laughs> I really feel self-conscious about it and I had a lot of cleaning to do and I don't think this code is really 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 user friendly and it's not up to date to work with the speaker plugin that is working right now so the latest micro version right now is 1.8 1.18 sorry 1.18.1 uh, but this uh, server is right now is running on 1.17.1 so it is really just uh, because of uh, that the 1.18.1 server did not work for me so that's why I'm using 1.17 as soon as the 1.18 works I can just copy paste my code into the 1.18 and then you can just run the same thing so don't worry about it so this is running on 1.17.1 and I will add the code for this project in the description below so you can check it out all right so that's that so let's begin so first thing first for this project which is a minecraft snack game uh, I specifically named it snack don't ask me why uh, we need a, a game board so the first thing that I thought about is to just create a board so I created a command where we can just hit board slash board and boom so we get a 10 by 10 board and make sure that you're facing positive X this is because of how the board works and how the game moves uh, so basically the height 
is based on positive x so this board right here is actually created using two parameters which are the height and the width so the height and the width has to be numbers do not uh, put any words in it i think it will pop an error I i'm pretty sure it should pop an error. there we go so it should pop an error if you put any words in it so let's say i want the height to be three and the width to be four and there we go so the height is always goes towards positive x and the width is along the z-axis so this is how it works and also uh, as soon as you create a board uh, it will keep the parameters of the previous block so if you hit board 3 4 previously and you hit board again you should just copy paste the same board as you did previously so it copies the same one and by default if you don't put any parameters uh, it should create a board that is 10 by 10 just like this one oops all right so now that the board is done so let me create a, another board right here and i'm gonna make it just uh, let's just make it 10 by 10 okay there we go so when i first created this board uh the board weren't actually really good uh i had to do a quick fixing and the way this works is the bottom left block is the block that is the reference which is this guy right here so this block right here is the reference to the entire board basically when i'm standing in the middle and hit slash slash board so it will look for the it will take half of the height and half of the width and then you look for the most left block which is this one right here right so when i'm standing in the middle and i do slash board so we take half of the height which is five and half of the width which is also five and then you will calculate the most left block and from the most left block is the reference for every other thing where the snake head spawns where the apple spawns so everything is based on the most left bottom left block so this is called the bottom left block and everything that happens happens within this range of the block right here so positive of the bottom left is the height so 10 blocks height and the positive z of the bottom left is the width so 10 blocks to positive z right here so this is how it works so it goes 10 blocks up 10 blocks right and then the board is created and it is based off where you're standing initially so i was standing right in the center and it just spawns right in the center so after the board is created we want to add the snake head and the apple so i'm gonna hit slash play so play is the command that i'm using for the uh, game i guess to initialize the game so ooh, that's a pre-respawn okay so when you hit slash play you will receive these four items and i'll explain to you why later and then you can see there is a green block and a red block so the green block is the head of the snake and the red block is the apple um you might ask me why i didn't just use a regular apple or like any other blocks to be the snake head i mean there are a lot of green blocks and i went through each one of them and i guess leaves are nice uh as a block i guess this this is a lot of watermelon uh leaves are also a good choice of blocks and as a snake it sort of looks like one if you pile it up together but uh, i couldn't find any block that was uh really suitable for a snake so I, I just stuck together with a green block for now so this is a green concrete and the red concrete will be the apple and of course you can't use an regular apple because yeah that's that's why it's uh blocks 
can't pick up apples and if i were to use the mob as a snake uh, that is also tedious i would have to rewrite the entire code for the movement uh, of the mob so let's say a villager uh, i'm pretty sure there's some villager out there right there so they have a specific movement for them movement priorities where they just wander around the second priority is that when they are in water they have to float the third priority when there's a player and uh, when there's a door they go near the door and something like that so i have to override each one of the priorities if i were to use a mob rather than just a block and also i'm have really sort of mastered how to code the blocks in uh, minecraft so that's why i'm sticking just to the blocks all right so that's that so what are these four items where well, these four items are the ones that i use for the moves so these are the movements so this is left up down and right so you have to face positive x and this is up this is down this is left and this is right i know this is kind of tough to control and i couldn't think of any other possible solutions like if i were to move and simultaneously make the block move it will really look really clunky and it's not really you know it's not really practical to use player movement as the movement of the snake so that's why i stuck to the items in my hand and yeah i think that's is what i wanted to explain about the board and initially this board when i first started it it gave me an error and i was like uh do you mind telling me what's the error and the program was like nope it just said a java lang exe and that's about it it was just speeding different errors at me and i couldn't actually solve it so what is the best thing you do when you face an error when you're coding well i just ended up hitting a bunch of page statements in every section of my code and i had to send uh the, the player a message because of how the plugin is inside the game you don't actually get to know where the errors actually are and you, you will have to uh, end up with having to uh, having adding a print statement that is also equivalent to sending a player a message in game so yeah that took me way too long to complete and after a while i managed to get it working and it was still a bit uh, weird <laughs> My snake was a little retarded, but I managed to pull it off and actually start working. So, what about the time? So, as soon as I start moving the snake, it needs to move automatically, and it needs to start moving forward automatically. So, to code a timer in this game, I did not use the bucket scheduler. So there is a scheduler that you can use, but the time in the scheduler you cannot really vary it and i'm not really good at using the scheduler and honestly i think it was really it might sound unconventional but i ended up actually using a piston timer so how i did it was every time a piston is going to extend i would make the snake move so let me show you how i did it I'm gonna create a new board right here really quick and for the redstone timer I'm gonna place a piston right here place a repeater here just like that and set it to max delay and right there we go so now once the uh, we done our initialization of the snake and the head I can start moving my pieces so my snake is right here 
posting x is over there so i can move up now and you can see the snake starts moving and you can do this in any order you want as long as the board is up and once you hit play and you start clicking one of these it should start making movements and you can control the speed of the piston timer manually if you want so let's say i go down here i'm gonna break this really quick and i want to make this faster so let's see here i'm gonna yep there we go all right so now this is way faster i think this is the fastest circuit that you can do and now if i continue you can see that my snake is moving super fast and you probably notice the game over sign uh, that is because I let the game still run even though that I have lost it's because of demonstration purpose and how dumb I can die and I'm really bad at this game so I can die really dumb and I don't want to start over from the start so yeah so that is why i made it so that even though i crash into it i still let the game run so yeah so i'm gonna oh, okay i'm still in so yeah that is the snake game so as you're playing along and if you happen to die or trap yourself in a weird situation like trapping yourself in a corner and you have no way to get out even though it says game over and you can still move but if you have no way to get out then what you can do is you can either stop the circuit or you can just hit slash reset that will reset the bot you will basically just clear the bot and you can hit slash play again and you can still using continue using the same bot and you can play uh, another game now there is a problem that i wanted to address regarding the generation of apples so basically once you are reaching the end game and you have a really small board so the apple spawn might be bad because of how small the board is so let's say the my initial code of how the apple spawn is that it will check for the bottom left block and then it will just spawn a random apple within the range of the board and if that random block that it selects has a snake on it let's say the snake's body or the head it will run rerun the code again to find another block a random block so let's say in the end game where we have every possible spot is uh, covered with snake i know this is just a three by three block but let's say it was a hundred by hundred it would take forever for the apple generation to begin and it would be randomly selecting every block in that hundred by hundred board and it would take absolutely forever to spawn that one apple so what i did was at the beginning of the game the apple will spawn randomly and as it's nearing the end game and when the board is almost filled with uh, snakes and its body the game will automatically search for the empty block and place the apple right there so it will search for all the empty spaces that are left and pick a random block from the empty space to spawn the apple so this is so that the code does not uh, strain uh, the program does not strain itself and it is an efficient way to run the code so yeah so yep that's pretty much it that i want to show about my uh snake game right here so if you guys have any suggestions regarding this snake game um i'm all ears i want to know what are your thoughts about this 
and let me know if there is anything that I can improve and I will try my best to update them and I will upload them to the github code that is in the description so yeah thank you guys for watching and I'll see you then